All right. Should be starting na po. Uh, assuming hindi nakamali yung aking YouTube thing ang majig. Should be starting na po. Obviously, si YouTube is still blocking sa pag. Uh, how is our chat? Is working, working. Oh no, what's going on? Bag. Hello, Mahoyas, everybody in the world of type stuff. Yeah, then testing natin si. No, I, I, I forgot how to do this, so I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. Or. Pinakabahan ako, baka hindi ko hindi ako marunong ulit. So let's. Uh, Ayun, andiyan na si, uh, andiyan na si uh, all of the um, All of the uh, YouTube's comments Sabi ni Brian Acabado Hi po kuya Pukak Dengpool Dengpool Pian Perinas Norms Pukak sa relax show uh, Ayoko na <laughs> Dengpool na lang tayo Dengpool <laughs> This this show is gonna be just thankful thankful show, huh? Okay. Yeah, nagsalita na si si Nightbot. <laughs> Nagalit na si Nightbot agad. Uh, nagsalita agad. Uh, let's actually check. Uh, just to make sure. Oh, may Ragun Ryzen at Core i9. Ah, uh, rumors yun. So I don't know if we really want to talk about it, but uh, yes, may uh, may. Uh, this whole AMD thing. Okay, so... Ano bang masasabi ko sa AMD? Hindi ako thankful sa AMD. It was... They're, they're freaking taking so long to build their shit. Uh, kaya, kaya I decided to buy my uh, my 1080 Ti uh, instead. Kasi parang hindi na umasensu si... I mean, okay, sure, umasensu si AMD, but Holy crap, are they taking forever? And I, I don't want to wait anymore. Waiting is not for me. Um, so, nakikita nyo naman ang ating, uh, ang ating graphics sa ating show today. Nag-start na naman yung ano, diba? Let's, let me actually check in Facebook if it started. Yep, it's live. Four people are watching on Facebook. Welcome to the show. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. You can uh, comment if you want. Lili daw siya sa ating comment boxer boxerinos. I think, I hope. Cross my fingers. <laughs> Welcome to the show everybody. I know it's pretty I started a little early like a couple of minutes early. Uh kasi matagal na. I mean I needed a refresher. Kagulat lang yung new sa Intel at yung AMD graphics. Ah, uh, di ako na What's up, hey, it's Gadget Addict joining us on the show today. Uh, we are also maybe possibly going to call Gadget Addict later to talk about this brand new phone. Kuya, paki-explain po sa overpriced na Vivo V5S. What's up, Emilio Aquino? <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, first of all, obviously, the thankful uh, reaction on Facebook is a, a a mother's day thing but me personally i don't think i mean sure we we are thankful for our mothers obviously but oh yeah that one um squeeze <laughs> uh so for the trailer that i showed actually i'll, I'll just show you the trailer but i know we can talk about it if you want to talk about it uh, let me just remove my tweak. Okay, and then bring in my desktop. Tweak. Oh no, what happened? Wait long. Let me just adjust my desktop here. You're supposed to take desktop one. Three. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Technical difficulties. My gas. All right. Um, if you want to see what my I was talking about with that. Um. I have not the search. Can I search for I am Kohak here? There we go. Hey, our my my other channel is getting uh, no on on the search bar now. Good. 
We're all gamers now. We're all gamers now. Sorry, if head sorry, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, all right, rest in peace, headphone users. Um, na ano eh, naramdaman ko yung bass ng headphones ko, eh, bilang brrr, brrr. Pretty good bass on these headphones, by the way. Um, so that was the HyperX Care Package. Uh, Kingston. Darating ba sa Pinas si HTC? Of course not. <laughs> no? But but lahat naman kayo, you keep asking me about phones that never reached the Philippines. So uh, what what can I do? You 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 ask me about stuff from Computex, which Computex is not even out. Uh, it's not even started yet. Um so yeah, uh, the care package that uh, HyperX sent me is over here. Uh, what's up, Aaron Ocampo from Facebook naman. Actually, hindi ko alam kung if I can show you easily. Uh, alright, there we go. Nah, I can't show you easily. It's right there. Can you see the little box on the chair with the red stripe? Right there. Uh, I can, yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's a Surface Pro on top of it. And there's a black box with the red horizontal stripe right there. That's the that's the care package. Ugh. The HyperX. I call it a care package, but obviously it's not really a care package. Um, it's a package by HyperX. Um, who they want to show me and they want me to show YouTube uh, people uh, that. The gaming setup is complete. Uh, HyperX, uh, back in, I think, 2016, started completing their gaming uh, peripherals. Because that they used to only give, uh, they used to, they used to only sell like uh, HyperX uh, RAM and HyperX headphones and stuff like that. But late last year, they started uh, making uh, mouse, keyboards, uh, mouse pads, and stuff like that. What's up, Joseph Seguin? Uh, so this care package is basically like, uh, uh, like, uh, what is that? <laughs> Some, something to complete your gaming setup without buying any other brand. So basically, uh, HyperX mouse, HyperX keyboard, HyperX headset, HyperX, uh, mouse pad and stuff like that. We'll do we'll do a proper like unboxing or something, but I didn't have time this week, so I didn't unbox it. I need to do like I needed to do more, uh, to produce more, produce other videos and, and work on other things. And also, I was a little uh, <laughs> out of out of. I was a little. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, disheartened from last week's BTS, so I was not uh, uh, encouraged to uh, to work on stuff. But uh, this week we're just gonna relax and uh, get our bearings back. My God, there's a lot of people chatting, and I can't keep track. So welcome to the show, everybody. Aaron uh, Ocampo, darating po ba sa Europe and Cherry Mobile? Ano yan? Ano bench? Ano ba ni bench yan? Good PM Sir Alex, ano po ang best phablet para po sa inyo? Sabi ni Randall Alonso. That's a good question. Um, what is your budget, Randall Alonso? Para sa akin, best phablet, uh, damn. I want to say a Nexus 6P, but obviously Nexus 6P is about to be two years old now. Finally installed Android Zero, Android O Beta on my two-year-old Nexus 6P, sabi ni Gian Parinas. Congratulations, sir. Uh, so that's one of our topics for today, Android O. Um, and I, all I remember from saying Android O is that uh, there's a there's a the the O word was it or something? Uh, the, yeah, the O word or some. There was a TV series about orgasms, 
and they they were like and something O, and that's all I remember when they say Android O. <clears throat> Robert Lieban says P9. P9 is not a phablet though; it's a relatively small phone. Where's my P9? It's a relatively small phone. I, I love the P9, but it is a relatively small phone. It's a really, really good phone. Huawei P9 Plus, I don't recommend because it's expensive. I would rather recommend the P9 over the P9 Plus. <clears throat> Chill episode tonight. Uh, so, welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Alex from Technoclass.com. This is the Big Time Show. Uh, it is Saturday, May 20th, 2017. I will just relax this show. We're just going to... We don't have a lot of... Thankfully, we don't have much to demo. I don't have any. Uh, I don't have the HTC U11 squeeze squeeze thing. Uh, we don't have the ransomware, the wanna wanna crypt, wanna cry uh, ransomware, and um, what's our other topic? Uh, Google I/O, which is actually one of the most boring Google I/Os I've ever watched. But that's that's our topics for this week, and uh, also uh, hopefully uh, if. Uh, gadget addict is uh, you know not not busy we're gonna use uh, our new technology our new um, system hey it's icy hot U USA welcome to the show we're gonna use our new uh, call a friend system to talk about uh, gadget addicts new phone if he's available if he doesn't pick up uh, sorry na lang. I'm sorry if he doesn't pick up uh, we're, we're not going to interview him about this new phone. That's the deal. That's the deal now with Call a Friend. If they don't pick up, you know, we move on. That's okay. That gives our guests a little bit more flexibility uh, when it comes to interviews and stuff. What's up, Nyao Nyao? Android Oreo, oatmeal, yung pwedeng maging pangalan. Uh, I, can't, I, I actually can't think of Android Oishi? <laughs> Yeah, by the way, Oishi is not a brand that exists, I believe. Outside of the Philippines, it's actually a Philippine brand. I'm not sure. Could, could somebody, could somebody uh, uh, clarify that to me? Oh, yeah. So, okay. Do, should we just start the topics? Because you guys are, start, are starting on your own. Um, okay, my, my Facebook window says it's not live. But obviously, I'm pretty sure it's live. <clears throat> oh yeah so by the way if uh if gadget addict is on the show watching we really do love his uh kagayan de oro vlogs and if you're not if you haven't checked out his kagayan de oro vlogs you should go to gadget addicts youtube page uh which i will show you right now where it is gadget addict uh, there you go there you go this is channel right here. He's gonna guest later, or hopefully. <laughs> and here is um, oh no, you'll get a teaser of what he'll talk about later. So he, he's talking about a bunch of things here, but uh, he's been to looks like he's been to said Saidayan the Auro. Actually, the most in, uh, the most uh, the interesting one, the one I actually watched and was kind of like fascinated about was the Pringles one because. Another CDR King, looks like another CDR King product. I know, Masabi Musa Nougat 7.1 some Max 3 Koya. Okay, so. There's, <laughs> you guys are, you guys are, uh, you guys are, uh, beating me to the punch to our topics for today. Uh, so first, well, these are very minor topics that I put in my topic list because it, there really is not much to talk about. So as you can see, our topic list for today is WannaCry ransomware, uh, lower prices on Zenfone 3s and stuff. So these are some very nice uh, improvements to the price of the Zenfone 3. And hopefully, a lot more people would be interested in the Zenfone 3. Even though I think the hype of Zenfone 3 is pababana recently. Like nobody's like Zenfone. If if you remember last year, we we had a we had a Coca Community's Choice Award. For best phone and everybody uh, well a lot of people voted for the Zenfone 3 it actually won as our Koha community's choice award 
Um, but these days, indeed, it's it's not really in everybody's like mind and hearts these days. But hopefully, if you're still interested in one in in, in a very good phone in the mid-range pr price category, uh, let's see if it actually shows up now. ZE five five two KL. Of course, it doesn't show up here. Let's just go to uh, ASUS's fa Facebook fan page where they actually announced a price cut. So it's not a major price cut. They they dropped the price on both the 5.2 and the 5.5 inch uh, by 2,000 pesos, which is what forty dollars. Not a major price cut, but it's 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 a it goes a long way. Uh, ASUS Philippines is that what we're looking for here? ASUS. Kaya bang kaya bang makipag sa bayan ni HTC U11 sa ibang flagship gaya ng G6 S8. Uh, some people will argue that HTC, HTC U11 will and, and is capable of competing against the G6 and the S8. Uh, hey, what's up, Rod Iverson? However, I, I, you could also argue based on the features, based on the, the design and everything. Uh, for example, the G6 has a bigger screen. Uh, you know, kind of a nicer design and probably, you know, let, we'll, we'll talk about the U11 later okay <laughs> we'll, we'll start with the uh the the, the zenfone 3 so so here's the uh the drop price for the uh zenfone 3 standard this is these are the ones that i really like obviously i still have my zenfone 3 standard right here which i haven't turned on in a while here it is um i still like this phone good good great 4k video great cameras uh, very solid performance, a little bit more bloatware than usual, but it's a it's a very pretty phone, uh, and, and you're getting a lot. You're getting a lot. So, um, like I said right here, the price on the the big the bigger version, which is this guy, uh, is now dropped to seventeen thousand pesos, which is still a lot, honestly. Um, that's what. That's that's around three hundred seventy dollars, something like that. No, 300, I want to say 350, but that's probably not right. Yeah, that's around around $350. That's, honestly, in the Philippines, that's a little bit, uh, it's, it's pricey, but on, when, you're, when you're thinking that this compares to a lot of, you know, selfie phones that don't really compare in, in price and quality and performance and battery life and, and all that, then, then this is definitely a good thing. But obviously, if you're... If you're a fan of the selfie phone then uh, this is not this even though this takes pretty good selfies this is this will not sell to you uh, I would recommend the smaller one which is uh, the 5.2 inch for $49.95 that puts it straight in the $300 price range and I think a lot more people will be very mu much more uh, welcome to spending 15,000 pesos Instead of seventeen thousand, because seventeen thousand is getting high, getting way up there, but fifteen is just in that sweet spot uh, for a lot of consumers. Love the power efficiency of Snapdragon sixty five. Yes, Snapdragon sixty five is very. Hey, what's up, Koya Ison de Guzman Jr. from? Uh, could, can I say uh, where you're from now, Koya Ison? <laughs> um, so yeah, the the new the new pricing for the Asus Zenfone threes are very attractive. Uh, unfortunately, they're a little old, especially since the Zenfone 4 might be announced this coming Computex. However, obviously, with the track record of Asus, it usually takes a while before any announced phone comes around. So even if they announce the the phones, the Zenfone 4 in Compu at Computex next week, or was it next next week? Yeah, next next week. It's gonna take like four or five months before it actually arrives in the Philippines, as expected, and. Realistically, Zenfone 4 will probably be available to us in the uh, in the Augusts and Septembers, or more like, more around the Septembers. For your information, Sabini Joseph Seguin, Zenfone 3 ZE 552 KL is due for face out to give away to give away for Zenfone 3 Zoom. According, no, not really. They 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 sort of said that, but I don't think they actually wanted to do that. Eventually, I think. I think the price point of the Zenfone 3 and I think despite the fact that the Zenfone 3 Zoom is arguably way better in a lot of aspects to the Zenfone 3 regular 
the price is much bigger. The difference in price is much bigger. It's around. It's almost ten thousand. No, not really. Uh, it's around. I want to say six thousand, seven thousand pesos. I want to say seven thousand pesos. So that's not in the same ballpark. So honestly, if I were you, I would. I could save a little bit more money by buying this instead. The zoom, not I don't necessarily think that you should be, you know, spending extra for it, except if you really need those features. Um, and I, I think I'll clarify that a little bit more once I, once I get around to editing and then scripting and writing and then uploading my Zenfone 3 zoom review, uh, which should come very soon, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, that's a Zenfone 3 zoom. Uh, and there's also one more thing that uh, Asus announced. Actually, they announced a couple of things that you might be interested in. Uh, for example, they're teasing a lot of their Computex products uh, to be announced like this. Uh, I don't really know what this is. This looks like just a blanket invitation to their Computex uh, event. Uh, what else is there? Uh, what is this? This, this might be... No, that's probably not... Uh, it says for your tells what no that's not it what is the where's the one that all right here's the other news item uh, if you're a if you're a buyer of the Zenfone 3 max 5.5 which is the Snapdragon 430 version you're getting nougat uh, nougat is rolling out so that's a very good very good thing for you guys and uh, I do like that Asus is keeping up with updates at least for the most part um, and I can't see one of their Computex things here. They 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 all actually teased a um, a Ryzen laptop, which I can't find anymore. Yeah, where is that? Well, anyway, so they actually teased a a, a laptop form factor, which probably is a, a Republic of Gamers mo model. And it's it had a Ryzen logo background. So this is uh, probably the first confirmation that we're getting that the uh, AMD Ryzen Mobile is gonna come out very very soon. And most likely we'll see more about uh, we'll learn more about the Ryzen Mobile pla processors this coming uh, Computex 2017 in about a week or so. So that's uh, basically our ASUS news, which is. Uh, they're they're minor news, honestly. The price drop and the nougat update—they're not really new phones or anything. But you know, if you're interested, that's kind of good. Junching says, "Wait, na lang ako to, to three years bago ba din yung mga bago ngayon." Uh, Junching, I don't know if you, that's a uh, a good way to. Depends on how you look at it, though. Um, me personally, I do like old phones. I do like, you know, I I I, I understand uh, me. I don't like buying like the super high-end flagships because I think I still believe that I'm not that rich to be paying 40,000, 45,000 pesos for a phone that I'll get rid of within two years when honestly, I, I could really live with just decent phone. And like I said before, I could easily live with the Zenfone 3 standard, good camera, good video, 4K video. Uh, Pretty, a very good stabilization, uh, which I've shown you before already. And if you haven't, you could see, uh, you could refer to my Zenfone 3 review, which I uploaded last year. Anyway, um, you know, and, and if you don't know, I'm using a, a BlackBerry Priv as my primary driver because I love the keyboard. And that's that's probably the reason why I'm not a big upgrader kind of person. I, I'm not tempted by the LG G6. I'm not tempted by the by the uh, uh, Samsung Galaxy S8 because I don't have a physical keyboard. And I know that's a very rudimentary and weird limitation limitation for me to not upgrade because it doesn't have a keyboard. But that's a great way for me to save money. Because <laughs> I honestly, okay, I had enough money to buy, for example, a Galaxy S8 last uh, couple, two weeks ago. But instead of buying a Galaxy S8, I bought a graphics card for my computer, uh, which is it, it, it's priorities. It's priorities. So I I already had a phone that I didn't need to get rid of. I didn't need to upgrade my phone anytime soon. 
I had a perfectly working phone. I had games on my phone. It works. It's got a quad HD display, takes decent videos, takes decent pictures. And if I were to prioritize what I wanted to prioritize, I honestly wanted a graphics card more than I wanted a, a new phone, a Galaxy S8 or whatnot, because I already have a phone. I'm perfectly fine. Uh, AMD release a Ryzen based laptop also comes with AMD Pro. Sabi ni Norms. Uh, GN says, Grammy na yung mga phones na 15K range dominated na ng mga selfie phones. Tulad ng Vivo V5S, Oppo F3, and Galaxy J7 Prime. Zenfone Max at Zenfone 3. Yeah, the hell, the Zenfone 3 is not even a selfie phone. They were born before these, these 20, uh, this, these monster 16, 20 megapixel selfie phones and then i don't even believe in them that much but uh it it all depends on who's gonna use it and how they're gonna use it and and i do admit sure they there's there's a use for them but you have to think about your priority sometimes when you're when you're buying these uh if you do have to take those selfie photos and you want to be very you know catchy when you take those photos and let's say you're a colegiala who wants to break into the, uh, you know, uh, Instagrammers and social media influencer territory. Then you could consider these as your stepping points. And I've, I've talked about this before. I've, I've, I did say that, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna stay on these phones for long. But honestly, you will be buying them, and then you you buy something bigger. Uh, when it, you're gonna buy a proper DSLR or a proper mirrorless camera, because honestly. You will you will be hungry for the image quality to share. That's what you need. But obviously, the stepping stone, if you want, is a 20 megapixel selfie camera. If you wanted to, 20 16 megapixel. Uh, Sir Alex, pagitulongan po ako sa problem na encounter ko sa Xiaomi Mi 5. Very poor Wi-Fi signal po yung problema. Oh boy. Um, I really don't know how to help you with that one. Um, Xiaomi Mi 5. Uh, are you sure that the Xiaomi Mi 5 is the problem when you're with your uh, Wi-Fi signal? You know, there's a lot of reasons why could, they, there could be a problem with the Xiaomi Mi 5. But honestly, why did you buy it? <laughs> it could, it, it's, it's not going to be the problem with the LTE signals because Wi-Fi signals are universal even in... China, so that's gonna be hard to. Somebody help. <laughs> Anybody has any tips for Randy Alonso? Because there's there's a lot of save save the fact that the Mi Five could be defective. Uh, bar, you know, it, it, uh, let's let's assume it's perfectly working. Young Xiaomi Mi Five. There could be a lot of reasons why it's having problems with the Wi-Fi. Or I would suggest testing the Wi-Fi with a different device. Um, but honestly, you know, there's so very many things to troubleshoot with that. Um, try try a different phone for now and see if, you know, just do a, do a, do a speed test on both of them. Uh, not on the same time, but... Hold them in the in the same area, very close to your router. Test the test the speed test on on the Mi Five versus, let's say, uh, I would suggest a Huawei phone because Huawei's have very good Wi-Fi or actually very good LTE and Wi-Fi signals. And uh, speed test with the Huawei phone or uh, or your control device, which is you know anything that has decent Wi-Fi. And you know, figure out what is, what your settings is with the, the the Mi 5 that is doing something wrong. Maybe you're holding it wrong. Try try to try multiple things. I'm not an expert with the Mi 5, but honestly, you bought a gray market unit, which is gonna be hard to actually, you know, if 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 it's actually broken. If if we're gonna go worst case scenario and it's actually a, a bad unit, uh, you medyo mahirap yung warranty mo John. Uh, Junqing, pero di worth it yun, 45.990, pwede ka na magka-gaming laptop. Well, some people prioritize their phones. Uh, and, and some people, they don't pay 45.990 outright. They pay with their credit cards, you know, deferred payments or plans. And they never, they rarely 
if ever feel the 45,990 brunt cash out uh, price for the 45,990. And some people actually prioritize their phones to spend 45,890 on a phone because you know there sometimes people don't use computers anymore sometimes their life is their phone and you know the s8 is a very good phone and i have to admit i was tempted uh but i do have to i got a lot of phones dude so <laughs> it it wasn't it wasn't a good idea to be buying another phone when i have like dude okay this is a review unit but okay i have a galaxy s5 which is super legacy I have the Huawei P9. I have the BlackBerry Priv, which is my primary driver, and then the Zenfone 3 that I told you about. Also have some some you know old ones like the the LG G4 that I need to sell. Photo uh, front cam dalang pinapalo naki. Junqing Zenfone 4 Max mo ka budget friendly ko ko yah norm. You want front cam na mga selfie phone? Okay, balita ako cherry mobile na maglalagay na front. Uh, let's see. And what are we going to I mean, I, I. Sorry if we're going off topic, but this is the chill stream, so I'm not going to complain. Uh, whether check your connection with Wi Fi or take to a service report. Alex, sorry, off topic here. What's up with the new law that just passed in the Philippines? No distractive driving. Do you think they're doing it right? They're not even sure how to implement it. Yes, yeah, so. <laughs> That's a very controversial new law in the Philippines, uh, and actually, it's in part of it's part of my uh, topics for this week, and it's called the anti-distracted driving law. And I wish uh, I, I'm, I haven't prepared anything for this. Uh, let's just search for it. And uh, you know, there's some good things with the anti-distracted driving thing, and there's some bad things. Mostly bad though. Um, the intentions here are are good. Uh, but it really doesn't solve much of anything, uh, particularly because anything that is not an electronic gadget, you can still put on your windshield. That is the anti-distracted distracted driving law. The distracted driving law only applies to gadgets. Among other issues that we're talking about here uh, for the anti-distracted driving law is the fact that only gadgets are illegal to be put on uh on the uh, the the line of sight of your windshield which means all inanimate objects uh all non-electronic gadgets like toys stuffed toys you the 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 markers for let's say you know let's say this is my uh, I, let's say I'm a Jeep or a bus driver and this is my destinations, right? I write all my destinations here and I put it right on front of my windshield, right? That is not illegal. Why? Because this is not an electronic gadget. It's just a piece of whiteboard with all my destinations or, or whatever, piece of cardboard. So this law only applies to electronic gadgets and also it, it, um, admittedly, Yes, you can be distracted by electronic gadgets when driving. However, it seems, you know, it, it, it seems ill ill placed because uh generally dashboard, you know, dashboard mounted gadgets are there so that your eyes will still be on the road kind of. It's they haven't thought this through or they honestly they they it really is just a knee jerk reaction. If if a lot of Filipinos don't understand what knee jerk reaction is, hindi sila nag-isip, they just kung ano lang ano lang pumasok sa otak nila. The first thing that comes into their mind, they actually made they actually thought of banning. So anti-distracted driving also applies to the United States, obviously, and uh, obviously texting and driving is the biggest no no in the United States, and it's very very heavily enforced, and I it, it's understandable, you know. Especially in the United States, where where cars are are driving much faster than uh, our streets, because they have highways and faster cars. Um, being a distracted driver in 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 a in an environment like that will net much bigger, you know, crashes and 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 uh, pileups and and accidents. But I'm not saying 
in the Philippines, you know, you can be a distracted, you, you should not be a distracted driver, but the, it's just there, the government's idea of what a distracted driver is, is misplaced. It's misplaced, you know. Um, they're not actually interested in removing the problems in the line of sight of the driver. They just want to remove gadgets in front of the driver for some reason. And for, to be honest, a lot of people think, well, me personally and uh, people I talk to think that this is just an anti-Uber or Grab taxi, Grab, grab uh, you know, the, the app-based transport law. This is just targeting the the Uber drivers and because I want to say in the Philippines right now in Metro Manila, I want to say 90% of drivers with dashboard mounted gadgets are Uber or Grab drivers. I don't see private drivers with a permanent fixture on their dashboard except for a dash cam, which generally you don't interact with anyway. And I don't think is the problem that the MMDA or whoever is, is is targeting here. I think they just really want to crack down on Uber and you know disguising it in a in a way that they don't they don't necessarily supposedly tackle uh, you know supposedly you know uh, target Uber necessarily. Here's here's what really is should be banned right texting and driving. Um, but you know, a lot of people are not complaining because it's in the right mind. It's preventing accidents. It's the idea behind it is preventing accidents, even though it's very ill, uh, ill advised because like I said, anything non gadget, non electronic gadget is allowed on your dashboard. Anything non-gadget is allowed and, and all the electronic gadgets should be out of the line of sight of your, your windshield. Which, to be honest, if you're referring to GPS or just glancing towards the map, you're not going to be allowed to do that anymore because you're not, your, your eyes should be on the road except you're your GPS or your map is no longer on the windshield, which means you have to look down to look at the uh, to look at the, uh, the the map, which already gets you in trouble. Which honestly will, unless you get in a in, a, in an accident, uh, nobody, not even the MMDA or the police will 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 catch will 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 <clears throat> give you a citation for looking down onto your map because that's not illegal see it, it, like i said ill-advised ill-advised uh thinking here that honestly i don't think that's the cause of, of of any incidents here the cause of incidents here is texting you know using your phone and it probably not on the mount but what can you do there's already an anti-texting and driving law which is Blah, whatever they're not really enforcing anyway so yeah so now in the philippines or at least in metro manila is what i can tell uh, you can't have gadgets on your dashboard your dash cam must be under or basically uh in between your windshield and your uh, rear view mirror um which could cause some issues when your rear view mirror is not necessarily on your windshield or something like that you know think of think of buses with with big windshields right and their rear view mirrors are not necessarily yeah whatever it is what it is what it is but it's still not it's kind of ill-advised all right let's read some comments before we move on i think there's a lot of comments uh holy crap there's a lot of comments I agree with the principle, but the guidelines are bad, says Gadget Addict. Uh, forcing drivers to look down away from the road just doesn't make sense, says, says Gadget Addict. Hopefully the guidelines... Uh, Sir Alex, I'm going to use a phone on Huawei P9. Okay, naman po yung Wi-Fi. Oh, Randall. Okay, so that's... <coughs> that's interesting. Try to see if the Mi 5 has some... Uh, you know, 
network or Wi-Fi settings that you need to change. Otherwise, you might have, you might have an issue with your Mi, Mi 5. <clears throat> what about those cars with the pop-up screen built in? That's a very good question. So, one of the uh, bigger questions here is the Mazda. Mazda LCDs. Because uh, I, I, I don't know if I can find it, but Mazda distracted... So, most Mazdas in the Philippines have a 7-inch a display. <coughs> so, here it is. Here's a Mazda with a 7-inch display. And there's actually... They, people have asked uh, uh, MMDA about this. And two, they got two answers. One answer was it's completely perfectly fine because it's on the dashboard and it's, for, it's a fixed unit and doesn't cover your supposed line of sight. The other one was a very funny response, which basically said, could you lower the display a little bit? <laughs> could you lower the display a little Are you kidding? It's, it's, physically, it's physically impossible to lower because it's, it's, it's connected there. It's fixed there. <clears throat> Let's see, what did they say? So here's the response to him. It will be better if you move it down a little bit more. <laughs> uh, and then there's a new one. According to the agency, there's no problem with the Mazda Connect touchscreen as it is built into the vehicle's dashboard. So just, you know, mostly confusion because even MMDA don't understand these cars so much. Because um, there's so many more other things that, that could... Be on a dashboard. There are some uh, H HUD elements. Uh, human. You know, there are some dashboards that 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 project numbers onto your dashboard, uh, onto your windscreen, right? And there are some cars in the Philippines that project lights to your windscreen that reflects back to you to tell you what your speed is and your whatnot is. There are gadgets as well that you buy third party that wherein you can buy these projectors also that project onto your windscreen and you can see your your tachometer or whatnot your speed and and i don't know if those are illegal or not but these these are you know essentially kind of light reading not gadgets on your on your dashboard and it doesn't obscure your windscreen but it does add information on your windscreen and is are those illegal as well or are they allowed there's a lot of weird Things that could be considered yes or no here, and it's still. This is why you know the Philippine government is so stupid, because they don't clearly state what is good, what is allowed, and what is not. Because they don't even understand what all the car. They don't know all the cars out there. Ha they don't know ninety percent of the cars out there, probably. <sighs> I'll, I'll tell you about uh, anything that I'll sell, I'm selling. I'm, I'm not really in the mood to talk about what I'm selling these days. Uh, Don't hate. Don't hate. But is signboy ng Jeep and bus bawal na paano kaya tayo sa sa uh, signboards are perfectly legal. Signboards on the jeeps and the bus are perfectly legal because they're not gadgets. But the rosary of your view, uh, really? I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure the the signboards are legal though. Uh -uh. You just simply connect your phone to your car's hand-free software to receive calls and just play around with the car speakers. Yeah, there's a lot of hands-free features. It's just a lot of people are not interested because they usually don't want to take the three minutes to, you know, turn on their Bluetooth and then pair it with their phone. And then, you know, sometimes there there are some things that you can't do with hands-free with your phone and whatnot. I'm actually tempted to do a video about my hands-free, my hands the hands-free features of my super old 2013 Moto X, which still is here. And I call it the Moto Doge, and it does a lot of features. It has a lot of car features that 
I can't show because I don't usually drive. And I and I don't know if I want to spend that much production time and money to actually produce a, a video that will illustrate the 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 car features of a phone that is not really common in the Philippines. But it's a very useful feature set. <sighs> There's a lot of comments about this distracted driving thing. Limping hippie. Alex, ano po ang ano opinion sa mga bus na may TV sa loob? Sa tingin nyo tatanggalin ba yan? No, 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 no. Because the TV is not on the windshield. I mean, it's, it may be on the windshield, but extremely high over the windshield that it's not considered, you know, within your line of sight, kind of, if you're driving. Gusto ko pa naman nasa dashboard ko yung Surface Pro ko. Sabi ni Top anything well congrats on you for having a surface pro man uh mag e-bike na lang uh sure um my radio man but the dashboard shield i also hate those jeepney drivers that smoke while there's a huge signage that says no smoking <laughs> it seems like we we're, we're we're getting a lot of um this is this this seems like a sore topic for a lot of people huh Uh, let's see. Let me scroll over here so you see what I'm scrolling here. How about a Tesla that basically has an iPad built in? Uh, so here's the funny thing. that A Tesla cannot be registered in the Philippine uh, uh, automobile registry right now. The reason being, there is no provisions in the car, in the automobile registration in the Philippines for a purely uh, uh, a pure electronic or pure electric car right because in the philippine uh, automobile registration the main problem here is there are there are required uh blanks to state what your engine number is and what your uh how many how many cylinders your car runs in and the Tesla has no engine. It uses a motor, obviously. An electric motor. The Tesla has no engine. And the Tesla has no cylinders. So, with the, all the requirements required by the automobile registration in the Philippines, you cannot officially register a purely electric motor vehicle in the Philippines. There are exceptions. Um... But for the most part, the Tesla falls under an electric motor vehicle that goes over 60 kilometers per hour. If you go under or you, if your car goes below 60 kilometers per hour, you can register it as a, I think, a recreational vehicle, a recreational electronic slow moving electric vehicle like you know the ones that Gadget Addict reviews and checks out the electric Jeeps, electric tricycles. And also, uh, this has been around for a while, the golf carts which are electric. But you cannot register a Tesla in the Philippines because of our stupid... <laughs> because of how antiquated our systems are, we don't have provisions in the registration of an automobile, automobile for purely electronic cars. You can register a hybrid because a hybrid has uh, uh, cylinders and engines. But you cannot register purely electronic cars that go over 60 kilometers per hour. Kuya, ibang kotse may NFC para instant connect. Yeah, true, true, true. If you vibe in, sir, may video regarding the subaos the dashboard windshield included on signboards. Huh, okay. Never thought, I thought that was allowed. Nissan Leaf, uh, my cousin used a Tesla, Toyota Prius Prime. Uh, I'm not sure what the Prius Prime is. Is that purely uh, an electric vehicle? Because some, a lot of the, uh, electric, uh, the, the electric vehicles in the Philippines are hybrids. They have a, 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 electri a, a, a gas motor that, that works in tandem with the electric, uh, hybrid, the, the electric motors. All right. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I, you know, 
Honestly, even I'm not familiar with all of our cars in the Philippines. Junching, uh, wala daw kahit sa ibang bagay pwede ilagay sa windshield or dashboard. Sabi ni LTF Herb. Uh, there are other things that need to be questioned here on the distracted driving that I don't really want to be, you know, I don't want to spend 30 minutes about this thing, but there are a lot of uh, other things that needs to be put on windshields that may distract or uh, uh, decrease your line of sight. What we're talking about here is the LTO sticker. The, hey, I see hot. Thank you for the $5. Again, thank you. You've been very nice. Um, there has been, there's a, there's a lot of stickers that generally need to put, need to be put in your driver's, uh, in your car's windshield. Typically, that's the LTO sticker. Uh, generally, you would have a sticker for your uh, village if you if you go to a village. Um, other times, you put a sticker on there to be part of a uh, car club or something like that and, and whatnot. But generally, there's a lot of stickers that typically need to be put on your uh, car windshield. Uh, I want to say at least two of them generally for most cars. Minimum one, at least for the LTO sticker. But assuming you're part of a lot of groups and a lot of you know memberships and a lot of and, and a lot of subdivisions, how many stickers are allowed on your windshield? Are there you, are are you not supposed to be putting any more stickers on your windshield ever? What about like magazine? Can you put them on your dashboard like a magazine on your dashboard now? Because that would actually reflect reflect up to the anyway. It's it's a it's a huge 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 debate that there's a lot of permutations to this debate. And honestly, I think they were a little ill advised and ill prepared to actually as as most Philippine laws are. They don't really know exactly all of the permutations, and they just just make a make let's let's try let's try to make a, a law so that. Our, our friends uh, are happy or we'll get more votes or we'll screw over the uh, Ubers and the Grab taxis uh, so we can ask them for 5,000. The, the first, the first uh, uh, offense that they, they get you with this anti-distracted driving law is already $100 or 5,000 pesos. The second is $200 or 10,000 pesos. The third is 15,000 pesos, $300, and they revoke your license or they take your license, something like that. So that's a lot of money. You know, a lot of violations here in the Philippines are just, a lot is just $10 for the seatbelt, $10. Uh, uh, um, reckless driving is like $10, right? Uh, you know, crossing the yellow line is $10, but distracted driving is already $100. That's... That's a lot of money for just that and, and and i don't know honestly i think they're this is a politically uh uh what do you call this i think the distracted driving law is more of a political move rather than actually preventing accidents uh number one we anecdotally we know that the government is looking for more and more ways to cash in on uber and cash in on grab which is uber's competitor and number two um we know that a lot of government officials have you know non taxis and and and, and franchises of taxis so it's a conflict of interest honestly but also they they hate these these new guys the grabs and the the ubers because they're making a lot of money and the government is not Getting that money, a lot of that money is not going to government's pockets for some reason because of how new the system is. And honestly, I think the government is just looking for new, more and more ways to cash in on Uber and, and Grab and make them, you know, a little bit more of their cash cow. Because obviously we know our government is corrupt and they, they're looking for more ways to, um, you know, get more money from us. That's basically, that's, I think, I think that's just... That's, I think, I want to say that's 70% of the reason why this law has been passed and 30% is on good intentions. Uh, Google I.O. Somebody asking for Google I.O. 
Funny thing is though they're focusing on this new law and yet there are motors still using tilting plates until now they're not penalizing. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of issues. A lot of issues. Magazine FHM motor. So uh, lucky ng penalty ayaman niya yaman yung mga huli. By the way, guys, just adding us a one plus three D. All right, so yeah, that will that basically let's let's try to end that because it was definitely part of my topics. I just didn't know that people would be so up in arms about this topic, and uh, I think I want I've, I've said more than what I wanted to say about this guy, but definitely, definitely, it's it's kind of a kind of a crazy new law here in the Philippines, and honestly, like I said, I think it's mostly political than than actual good intentions. Um, all right, so let, next topic right now, we're gonna see if uh, our uh, super duper mega ultimate wow guest is available for us to communicate to. <laughs> I didn't give him a warning, so let's see if he's uh, he's available. <clears throat> Long live Honda Civic. Maybe he's not ready. We'll give him uh, if he doesn't pick up. We'll. We'll ask him on chat because he's on chat. Hello. Hello. Hey, Wait, what's let me up? Just pause the stream. Can you see me? Uh, no, I can't. But I, you don't, you shouldn't be able to see me either because I'm streaming. But I will share my, I will share at least my, uh, what is this? Share my OBS so I could, you can at least see the OBS window. I, I don't really know if that'll help, but. That's okay. Where did my Skype go? Hey, there you are. Hey everyone, how are you doing? I think I'm now live with you, right, on the yes, stream? Yes, you are. I'm gonna make you. Good, good, good. I'm gonna make your face bigger. There you go. Because we don't have anything to show on the uh, on the web screen. Welcome to the show, Mr. Gadget Addict. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. Enjoying my new phone. Enjoying your new. I saw your uh, your uh, a fingerprint test. Definitely much faster. <laughs> That's yeah, it's pretty fast, fast right? It's impressive. Um, yeah, well, uh, I, I want to get into that, but first of all, how was uh, Cagayan de Oro? Very nice. It's uh, the temperature is much cooler there, so it's actually you know it's quite enjoyable even without aircon. It's it's quite relaxing. I know. Quite I like cooling. I like the the scenery that you were showing us, which very nice, very nice. That's why I like the um, the provinces, except you know sometimes I gotta be in Metro Manila to work. So unfortunately, I gotta stay in Metro Manila where. Everything is yeah, gray and smoggy. And stuff, right? <laughs> I, I wish I could live in in the province. Some someday when we have fiber and then you know. Uh, I think yeah. Do they have fiber in Cagayan de Oro? I, 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 I think in Davao they should. Davao. Definitely in Davao. I'm not sure in Cagayan de Oro though. Um, we're seeing a lot of comments here. So I've been. It's, uh, Robert Liban says you're very handsome. He said. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Um, with my laundry hanging behind me. Is that laundry? I can't even tell. I thought it was like a, yeah. like a, what is this? Curtain. Like a piece of art or something. Yeah. No. Uh, ben says uh, it's it's G A, my bro. He said. Uh, Good day, Ben. He calls you G A. A regular on your channel. <laughs> All right. So welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Gadget Addict. We have uh, calling upon you today. Um, well, also, uh, please plug your uh, your channel. And your Twitter, if you yes, want. my channel is Gadget Addict. You can find me on youtube.com forward slash gadget addict, also on Twitter, uh, twitter.com forward slash yt gadget addict. Right, yt gadget addict. What is it you are you are interested in generally for your YouTube videos? Um, it's a bit of everything, but primarily reviews, gadgets, CD arcing stuff, solar yeah. panels, um, some vlogs, but not, not too many vlogs. I don't want. I want to. I, I don't know if you 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 want to identify with this, but I see a lot of you know rechargeable electric fans. Solar oh, solar yes. is definitely That's huge. Especially you you were huge on solar, even before the electric fans. I've I've been following your channel for a little while. Uh, you That's were building true. a lot of solar, solar stuff before, right? Yeah, I do like the solar stuff. I mean, like like I said before, man. If if I weren't you know covering a lot of these. You know, consumer gadgets. I would be tinkering with all the electronic stuff, but these days my hands are not black anymore. So they're 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 uh, I want to go pampered hands, so they never pampered get into hands. like the because you know when, when you work with greasy, when you work with a lot of electronics, you 
generally have you know a little bit more dirtier hands and you know you generally that's burn true. them with a soldering iron or that's true yeah you try to you try to you know you force like some wires to go together and generally you work them a lot more but yeah my that's hands true. have been pampered recent <laughs> very <laughs> living the good life <laughs> not really um but welcome to the show um obviously the if everybody anybody you should you guys should check out gadget gadget addicts channel he's a uh, um, honestly, some very good uh, projects and some reviews there for electronics and a lot of Thank solar you. stuff. You. And your your uh, the 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 uh, the unusual or the um, the <laughs> the occasional. What is this? What this is, is a uh, solar powered power bank, one hundred and eighty eight thousand milliamp hour. <laughs> well, wow. <laughs> Which of course is not true. I know. You, uh, I saw your tweets. Obviously, not Samsung either. Where did yes. you get that one? Well, this is from our friends at Lazada. Oh, dang. Have you seen... Okay, so this is not necessarily a, a power bank. Have you seen the 2 terabyte USB thumb yes. drives there? Yes. <laughs> I, I'm interested I, I in, in actually to them, debunking asking that. Them, yeah. yeah, they're such nonsense. But the thing is, people are wasting their money. They're buying those USB sticks. And they'll leave like a one-star review or a two-star review. But then there's so many fake reviews, so right. people actually think they're legit. And right. I don't understand. I keep saying to Lazada, can't you remove them? And they're like, no, we don't sell fake products. I'm like, well, what do you think that is? That's no, a fake they don't product. Have, they don't have us to tell them which ones are fake. They, they, have like, they have like dudes that are like, don't really know these things. So it's like two terabytes. It's probably right. It's probably true, right? They don't really check it's like that. like 500 pesos, two terabytes. Yeah, that must be the real deal. I know they don't have this like skepticism that we have, and obviously mm -hmm. they they they'll they'll err on the side of allowing it because they'll they'll make money regardless, right? So the, they, they don't have an in incentive. The long run, they don't have much of an incentive to put uh, uh, to to uh, eliminate bad products on their site so much. In, in the short run, yeah, but imagine in the long run if people start thinking, well, if I buy a power bank from Lazada, is it going to be fake? If I buy a exactly. USB stick, is it going to be fake? And well, then people a, stop buying from them. That's the primary reason why I'm very skeptical in buying like power banks and the, the ones that are easily fake, I'm very, very skeptical from buying from Lazada. Um, yeah. When, when I see like legitimate people adding reviews with legitimate like you know, it's it's this and that, and I it's I checked it's original. Then I'll then I'll be more uh, you know yeah. confident. If it's in got buying. like fifty unverified reviews, <laughs> yeah. you might think twice. Right, right. When it's like some just I sometimes I check their name. Sometimes it's like this is not a Filipino name. I don't think this guy is <laughs> actually a person. It's like Barry White or something. <laughs> Five yeah, stars, exactly. best ever. <laughs> His name is Gadget Addict. I don't I don't think this guy is legit. Anyway, I'm kidding. Um. <laughs> But obviously, okay. So that's not what you're here for. I know you've been you showed off our, our your your uh, your debunked uh, power bank. Uh, I don't know if what else you want to talk about, but uh, I I asked you to be on the show, see if you want to talk about your new phone, your brand yes. spanking new phone. Quite happy with this. This is the OnePlus 3T. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't go for. I m you remember I was spoke to you about this yesterday, whether I was going to buy like a grey market or uh -huh. if I would go to say Digital Walker. Yeah. The thing is, I could go to Digital Walker, but it's an extra say 25%. That's that's the price difference, 25%. It is, it is. So, you, you're taking a risk because if something goes wrong, of course, you, you're going to have an issue getting it fixed. But yep. I thought for 25%, I think I'm going to take the chance, go for the grey market version. And you know, cross my fingers and hope for the best. And so far, you know, it's been it's been really good. Yeah. Um, um, you know, honestly, uh, I'm okay with the risk. And me personally, I buy a lot of you know secondhand products as well. So I always take that risk. And and for the most part, if you're buying decent, you know, decent brands, they're generally reliable enough that they last you one one or two. Yeah, years, that's the thing. That's right? why they give you the warranty because they trust. They trust the item in the yeah, first place, right? Yeah, that's true. And obviously, a lot of people are buying gray, and we don't really get that many people that are complaining about, you know, their gray market unit. They couldn't get a warranty. That means the product that they bought is probably good, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, go ahead. Tell us about your phone. So, 
I mean, I don't know the like the specs of the CPU and stuff. You're better at that. But uh -huh. for me, the most important things, of course, is you know the fast fingerprint scanner. Front camera is really good. Uh -huh. uh, I could be wrong on this. I think it's 16 megapixels. I'm yes. not 100% sure, but it's it's very very good. Yes. Um, battery life is decent. You've got the dash charging. So I tested that earlier. It got just under 60% in 30 minutes. Um, another nice thing is like the split screen where I can have like say YouTube on the top of the screen yeah. and of course that's like an Android thing as opposed to, but you still need a phone strong enough to run both at the same time, right? Uh -huh. um, yeah, I mean it's it's super quick. Of course I'm coming from an iPhone 6. Um, camera stabilization, shooting video, so far I've been impressed. I haven't done a long, a long test of that, but so far I've been pretty uh -huh. impressed with the stabilization. and. No complaints, really. It's it's a decent phone. I think you get a lot of phone for your money. Is uh, for example, if you obviously you probably canvassed around, see what you were looking for. What were yeah. what were the phones in your contention in at that price range? Um, well, not too many actually. Like the Zoom, the Zoom Three that you mentioned earlier. Uh, right. It, no. Yeah. Um, the P Nine. Uh, what else was there? I was looking at some of the Oppo phones, but mm -hmm. I, I yeah, don't know if you're really getting the best bang, bang for, for buck yeah, with them. No. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, to be honest, like this just screamed out to me with the specs, with the reviews that I saw. I was I was pretty much sold straight away on this one. Right. Yeah. So uh, for everybody who's not familiar, the three T basically it's a it's like a really high. It's it, obviously th the OnePlus brand is a brand that like always wants to beat the flagships with a a, pr a, a phone that is m like mid-range price so the 3d um, if you convert the dollars to imported price here it would be around 20,000 pesos the the white market variant which you can buy in digital walker is about 25,000 um, and you're getting basically flagship specs from late last year this is not 2017 this is a snapdragon 821 um, six gigs of RAM, which is very, very, that's very nice. Yeah. Uh, 16 megapixels on both front and back, and I believe uh, 64 gigs of storage. I'm not sure if it has a micro SD, but it, no, it doesn't. Yeah, so it's it's very nice, and obviously dash charge is actually one of the fastest charging um, uh, technologies out there. I think Vuk Charge from uh, Oppo is a little bit faster, but honestly. You can't really complain as long as it's fast charging. Just don't give us the two two amp, <laughs> the basic two <laughs> amp, right? That yeah, anything basically. but that. Yeah. Um, like you said before, uh, your your experience before was on an iPhone. Did you say? Yeah, that's right. So there are little things on this phone that may not seem like much to many people, but for example, if I press the power button twice that immediately launches the camera. Huh. Whereas on my iPhone, I'm always struggling, like trying to unlock it. And you know, sometimes the screen isn't like responding. So you, you, by the time you get the camera, whatever you wanted to shoot is already gone. So even just little things like having that simple launcher to launch the camera, it's it's really useful. So you're saying uh, at this point in time, we've act, uh, an Android has actually surpassed the user interface and, and the, 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 the speed in which to get to a camera. Cause there was a time. I think so, yeah. yeah, there was a time when it was like really laggy and, and kind of annoying just to get to the camera. Um, yeah. But yeah, Android has caught up at least, or at least this one. Because um, I was on Android before. I had the S3, uh, and I also had the S4. So I have had experience with Android those in the were past. Very laggy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Samsung's. <laughs> So it's little things like that, you know, they really sell me on this phone. It's it seems like a simple thing, but when you come from an iPhone, which is so limited in what it can do, it, it can make a big difference. Right. I mean, you're not a stranger to the Android ecosystem, but uh, mm -hmm. it, it's still, you know, once you have that flagship uh, uh, UI that is also open, uh, kind of allows you to be, um, you know, more flexible, I guess. It's, um, yeah. So I'm I'm happy with my purchase. I think it, it's a good purchase. It's a good right. phone. Well, I don't really have. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see, actually had some questions, but I. Wait, why is why is your YouTube channel Phil Stuffs? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. This was your Short original URLs. Yeah. 
But oh, it also works if you go to gadgetaddict.youtube.com uh, forward slash gadgetaddict. Right, right. This is the... Because uh, of the channel name. Yeah, I, I sort of wish that you could you could actually change that eventually. Like, obviously they told yeah, you you can nice. only use one. You could usually customize it once. Um, you know, these days I kind of like, I'm thinking of changing the name of my child, but I can't because I already registered it and everything. <laughs> But yeah, it would be a lot of work to try and change it. Well, yeah, but, you know, it's it's getting harder and harder to explain the name of my channel to a lot of people. The techno class. And what, then where did it come it from, up. anyway? I, I don't think I know. Um, well, uh, I was trying to be very creative, and I was, like, thinking, you know, it has to be kind of smart and, and whatnot. And obviously, I wasn't thinking, you know, URLs at the time. I wasn't thinking easy to remember at the time. And yeah, like trying to explain to people in person. Yeah, and, how do you and, spell that? Yeah, so I thought you know, you know, I I was kind of, uh, you know, explaining things a lot more and then trying to, you know, show people what what's good. So I was like thinking iconoclast, but instead for instead of icons, it's Techno. it's for tech. Yeah, so. That's what that's what I thought, and I thought ah, that's pretty smart, and and I thought I thought that actually made sense, but I guess it doesn't for a lot of people. And also, I understand that iconoclasts are, ha, are can also come in a bad light because they were literally breaking icons back in the medieval <laughs> eras, right? Literally I, with, with hammers and stuff. So I, obviously, I'm not breaking, I'm not hitting phones with hammers. That's not what I'm doing. No, right. maybe you should though. I'm sure some people would actually <laughs> like that. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm actually thinking of you know, um, you know, there was one once where I was like, okay, this, I could, I could probably start a, uh, you know, buy and destroy kind of uh, content, but I haven't, I haven't decided on that yet. Anyway, yeah, this, this, that was the uh, the history behind the channel. Anyway, I mean, we're doing okay, but I think, I think, honestly, if I picked a better name. I could be doing better. Um, what name would you go for? Have you got any other ideas I in mind? I have no idea. I have no idea <laughs> right now. It's, it's never crossed my mind because it's, you know... Um, you, you, know you don't really I, have the opportunity. Yeah, but, you know, my branding right now is a lot of Kohak stuff, so... That's I, true. I, I, I could use something like that, but I don't really... I don't have the opportunity. But my gaming stuff is... It's Kohak related, and, and some of that is is nice because it's it's getting the identity there. Um, let's read some comments here before we close out this uh, this topic. Um, you don't you don't game on your phone that much, do you? No, basically it's all just social media, YouTube, right. and pictures, videos, that kind of thing. Oh right. So have you tr have you this is is this your first time? Using a relatively stock Android phone with the NuGat update for the for the split screen. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's very handy, isn't it? But the but the Samsung it is. the Samsung phones had split screen before, right? They were just um, kind of clunky. They were kind of clunky. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was yeah. so long ago since I had right. it, but, but it, yeah. it's working well, and the screen's big enough for it to actually be, you know useful if the screen's right. too small it, it's just not going to work Definitely. This and is also a good you have screen. you have the horsepower to push the two applications yeah exactly uh, which is very very nice and obviously you have six gigs of ram which is very nice as well uh yeah. so let's see here mm. gn perina says i particularly like gadget addicts uh, 99 peso power bank i don't know which one, one was that that was from cdr king right the was cheapest it? power bank that i've seen actually wasn't that the one that is not Good or was it a good? It was. Bank? It's okay. It's not like uh, it's it's basic, but it's okay for 19 right. peso. You you get you get what you paid for. Definitely, it's good. It's good enough. Is that the one that's like almost stripped down or no? It was actually. Yeah, it's it's like a square box and it's ah. it's quite it's just one single battery inside, but right. it will give you you know say uh, on on a phone like this probably not that much maybe 30 percent, but you know it's a hundred peso. So what can you yeah what can you do? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Can some of these questions are in Tagalog, so I'm I'm still reading them and translating them for you. Uh, I'm also looking through on the other computer desktop. Brian Akabado says Zenfone 3 Zoom is a good phone gadget. I think 5,000 milliamp hour Snapdragon 625. 
4 gigs and 64 gigs of RAM. I mean, the Zoom, I, I think, is fine. I think you're paying a little bit more for a little bit of the, what is this, the novelty of the Zoom feature, which I don't know if you necessarily need for your uses. I, I don't know. I don't think I would use it personally, yeah. the Zoom. The 5,000 milliampere battery is good, and the Snapdragon 625 is good, but you're, co you're comparing the Zoom, which has a Snapdragon 625, versus the phone he bought, which has a Snapdragon 821, which is much, much, much higher in the, the processor pecking order. <laughs> so I, I think, you know, the, the trade-off here is, you know, battery over, um, uh, what do you call this? The a bigger battery would be welcomed, but I'm, I think I'm getting by with this, and I've got like a million power banks, so yeah, I think I'll true. get by. Yeah, that's true. Have you actually found like a solar power bank that actually works really well? Or I, not the yet. I've got of a one solar panel for is so low, right? Yeah, like this one. I tested this earlier. It's uh -huh. less than half a watt, so it's you know it, it's nothing basically. You, you could right. blow on this and push, put more power into it. It's, <laughs> it's useless basically. Uh, the thing is, people put them in the sun, and because it starts blinking, they're saying, "Oh, I'm charging." Right. It's not really. It's, it's doing nothing. I had to raffle off like three of those, and really, really, they they just wouldn't charge. I mean, I I understand yeah. that like, if I left them for the entire day in the sun, I I want to say I want I want to get like a hundred milliamp or milliamps something like that. <laughs> it would be it's it would so, be minimal. It's so it's such a small panel and. The yield mm -hmm. is so so low, but it's really best if you have the, um, those those backpacks. like dedicated USB solo yeah like the backpack one right, or right. something like that, and then just connect that to your power bank a regular power bank. Right, I I understand. You know, uh, sometimes people think you know solar is magic, but yeah, <laughs> you, you, but it's kind of a con though. You know, it's it's a bit of a scam because you know people see this and they believe what they hear and then right. they waste their money. So right. It's kind yeah. of snake oil. Uh, I, I, I saw like a similar uh, Kickstarter before that actually, you know, it actually succeeded as a Kickstarter. And it was like a motion motion charged power bank. Oh, okay, you're right. And so when you walk around, it's going to yeah. generate power. And it would, it, like, it they, they tried it for like three hours, couldn't do anything to their phones. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, you, have to, you have to not overestimate the capabilities of these small, you know, ge power generating uh, That's right. things, but it, it's very nice. But they are getting smaller. The, yes. the thing is, I've, I've got a 10 watt one, which is, you know, it's about the size of this. So once you, uh, you unfold it, it's a little bit bigger, but they are getting smaller though. So, well, I, this is not related to the thing that I asked you about, but I, I know we're we're kind of like shooting the shooting the breeze. Here. Um, what do you think about? The, the the supposed you know well let's let I, I I wouldn't say anything about it first I'll ask your opinion what do you think about solar roadways uh, I think that it's a bad idea for so many reasons um, like we have so much roof space that is unused to start with right so why put them on the ground where it's going to cost more to make them because they have to handle the weight of cars going over them. They're going to be blocked all the time with cars going over them. They're going to get dirty, the, muddy, the best, cracked. The best angle for the sun either, right? Yeah. And if you look at their project, it's been, you know, I think it's five or six million US dollars they've right. now spent or collected. And what do they have to show for it? Solar panels that, can ge that don't generate more power than they use because the LED the lights LED can lights, shoot so yeah. much power. So. It, I think it's a bad idea. Just we have so much unused roof space. Right. Put them there. They're cheap, you know, relatively cheap, regular solar panels. The roof space is being unused anyway. Like SM North Eds are using it as a car park roof. It it makes right. sense. So yeah, yeah so, solar roadways seems like know, a bit we, of a scam. We, you're saying we instead of the inefficient and possibly Expense. negative energy net uh, net energy produ produced. Uh, production of roads where we have to do a lot more to you know fill these roads and put solar yeah. panels on top of them we could just put it on top of our roofs which is perfectly free to put on right exactly right yeah I understand and, and there's a lot of calculations going on there that says you know it's not even you know efficient enough and cost efficient enough uh, yeah 
that it won't even pay for itself for a long, long time. So yeah. For anyone uh, that's interested, there's a YouTuber, the EEV blog. Yeah, that's. Um, I'll put it in the, the chat. Australian or something, right? That's right. Yeah. He's he's like debunked this several times. So many different reasons, both right. technical and just feasibility, that why it can't work. So check out his channel. There's a comment here that says, uh, Aaron Ocampo says, I wish Gadget Addict or Kuya Alex made a video that they will smash Flare X with a hammer. <laughs> I'm guessing he doesn't like the Flare X. Oh, well, the Flare X is legendary in, in BTS. and I might consider that if I can find a Flare X. I might be our... Uh, I don't <laughs> I'm, uh, How many dislikes will I get for smashing a perfectly working phone? <laughs> That would be an interesting one. Right. Okay. So before we end, uh, Norm says, do you have any message to your viewers? To my viewers? Yeah. Um, just thanks to everyone who keeps watching, commenting, sharing, um, asking questions, or helping other people because I don't always get to reply to every comment. Right. So it's very good when someone asks a question and then somebody else has already answered it. It saves me you know, some effort. Um, so yeah, thanks to everyone. What, what do you like? Um, like, what would you want your audience to to learn or to pick up from your from your content? Like, um, I don't I don't see you not necessarily as like an environmentalist or something, but obviously solar no, is so a much. very nice um, technology I, that could push for better uh, for a better environment. Yeah. I, I'm definitely not hardcore environmentalist that's right. going to go out and tie myself to a tree, but <laughs> I do like promote it a little bit. Um, but I guess my channel is generally just helping people not to get ripped off by saying, you know, what's good, what's bad. Right. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to say if a product sucks, even if that means that, you know, if it was a review unit, they're never going <laughs> to give me another review unit. Yeah. Um, of course, some people are like, yeah, I'll just say it's okay, but really it's junk. And, yeah, I'm, I won't do that. Uh, ben, your uh, your number one fan is asking, what do you think about fidget spinners? Uh, they are overhyped. Yeah. He's right, but I think they're kind of cool. I haven't actually even tried one yet. I've had so many emails saying, "Can you review it? Can you review it?" Crazy. Uh, I haven't tried it, but I, I think they're pretty cool actually. You know, I think they're okay. They're nice toys, but uh, me personally, uh, my 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 fidget device, my fidget gadgets, are like I have a I have a Rubik's cube. That's okay. what I fidget on a lot of the time. Uh, there was a time when I fidget on a pack of cards and I was just shuffle them. And most people would even, back in the days when the BTS was like three years uh, three years ago, I would shuffle them on the show. They People would hear it really? on the audio. <laughs> something like that. I don't know. I, I, I do like, I understand the, the need to fidget. I don't understand how they're becoming so popular now that... I think I, people yeah, I are making know. this into a cottage industry. I, right. I think it'll be a fad, though. It's it's not going to last forever. It's going to be yeah. a fad, and it's going to pass. And, you know, I'm sure some people are being paid quite handsomely to promote them right oh, now, yeah. and that's why yeah. we're really seeing them everywhere. So it's partly, I think, it's just marketing. You know, yeah. people are really getting the hang of how to push a product. There was a, and, there was a different fidget device before, the, the Cube. With yeah, the one the, with the, the clicker. Like, it's got switches. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. I kind of like that more because it, it, it had like more things to do with it. But you know, you could use true, it in a functional way because so it actually counts quality. stuff, right? Does it? Uh, I think it. Well, it actually clicks and then counts. Numbers. Oh, it has one that has a count. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. it's different ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyway, I think you know they they are kind of marketed now, and I don't know why, but everybody's been fidgeting since. They've been, you know, it, it, nobody's just instantly started fidgeting because these came up, <laughs> right? I, I wonder though, like how many people who never used to do it and now they're just sitting there like spinning. Yeah, this thing there. maybe they trigger them. <laughs> All right, so let's finish up here. Um, let's see, Robert Liebman says R.I.P. Cherry Mobile. Ben says, sorry for that question. I'm just obsessed with fidget spinners. Nino Mercuro says, "Good PM, Alex and Gadget Addict." So here's another guy from. He's from. He's on uh, Facebook right now. Uh, even schools are banning fidget spinners. They should. <laughs> not re Well, not really. They should like. They're probably a distraction though for some a people. Distraction, yeah. 
Icy Hot USA says, are you a fan of Elon Musk, his company and his projects? I would say everybody would be like, he's, he's not doing very badly these, I mean, he hasn't done anything that would make us want to hate him, right? Yeah, he's, I think he's like 10 out of 10, fantastic what he's doing. Right. All right, so one last question is one more. <laughs> What do you think of the new OnePlus 5? Obviously, you don't know this uh, any specs about this. Or even I don't know the specs about this. But uh, you did ask me before buying this phone. I said the OnePlus 5 is coming soon. Uh, yeah. What made you decide on buying the 3T now? Because uh, this, you're right. This is something we spoke about. Um, wait, my laptop's overheating. Let me just raise oh, it up wow. a bit. Okay, there we go. It's at an angle now. Um, so yeah, I could wait and maybe it would be two months, three months. How long would it take to get to the Philippines? Um, and I thought, well, what am I going to do in those few months? I'm going right. to suffer with, you know, a really rubbish phone. Yeah. And it's, I know that once I get the five, three months later, people will be saying, oh, the six is coming soon. Yeah. So it's it's this forever cycle of, yes. you know, wait, wait, wait. So no, I thought I'll just get it. I it, It's enough phone for me anyway. I think it's a good deal good value for money so yeah. I'll, I'll get it the price is prorated a little bit after the release so it's it's not yeah, actually that's, that's the same the price as release anyway all right so i, I don't want to keep you uh anymore i I'm, I'm trying to minimize the time i keep my guests uh on the show because sometimes they want to do something else um but uh i'll leave you with your parting uh parting uh, message uh well thanks for having me and thanks for the advice yesterday as well it's very uh, appreciate it because I don't know like the ins and outs of every phones and I no know problem. you know a lot more than I do and yeah I'll just continue watching the show once I get off I here, honestly so. think the 3T will serve you very well and being that so. you know we share a little bit of the, the techie side of things I think you don't really need the selfie phones or anything like that no, and yeah. I, 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 I deem you I, I think you're a person that wants it uh, you know kind of a minimalist you don't want a lot of bloatware and stuff like that. So the 3D is definitely yeah. good for you, definitely. I think so. All right. Thank you for being okay. with Thanks us on the show. Thanks for having me on the show. All right. Okay, I'll continue watching. Cheers. Bye. Bye. All right. That was Gadget Addict. I know, I mean, I, I, I kind of don't know how long I I want to keep people on the show. I mean, sometimes they just want to just keep browsing while watching the show. So I didn't really want to keep him for much longer than that, especially since we're moving on to different topics now. But thank you very much, Gadget Addict, for being part of the show. I know it's a big imposition on a lot of people to be to spend, you know, to, to save the time and be on the show. All right, so let's uh, let's move on now. And let's move uh, Skype on the show. All right. Let's read some of these comments before we move on. Fidget Spinners was invented a long time ago, 90s to be exact, by a woman. Uh, Icy Hot says, one of the YouTubers I subscribe to bought a $100 fidget spinner. I think he might even, I mean, if he bought a $100 fidget spinner, uh, fidget spinner, he may be even earning more than that by making fidget spinner videos. Because when it, it's, it's such a trending topic these days, so... If it's a popular video and it's a popular fidget spinner, or if you can, you know, make a video that sort of it interests people in the fidget spinner he's talking about, uh, then then he probably earned more than a hundred dollars on it. Yung kasabahan ko sa trabaho ko magkaiba gagawin bola yung dalawang tinda. Yung kasabahan ko sa trabaho kasamahan ko sa trabaho says Genji Genji Choi gadget Glenn Ford. Kakaiba yung mag-fidget. Kinagawang bola yung mga tira, tira-tirang kanin sa mesa. <laughs> so he's fidgeting with rice. <laughs> uh, Gadget Addict says, watching the stream, I think our voices overlapped a little. Uh, maybe that was a Skype thing. It, it was, yeah. We were, you know, we were kind of talking over each other a little bit there. But I think it's fine. Uh, Gadget Addict says, happy to be on the show. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, Gian Perinas asks, how much does the 3T cost again? Uh, I think Gadget Addict paid about 200, uh, 200, $20, $20, 20,000 pesos or 400 United States dollars. Uh, the white market version uh, will cost you about uh, 25,000 pesos or 500 dollars. 
Uh, Icy Hot says he was comparing a cheap spinner from an expensive one. If he gets like a hundred thousand views on a video about that spinner, he'd already pay for it his own for the hundred dollars he bought the spinner from. Uh, generally, if the target uh, video market or generally if the target audience for a video is the United States or most Western countries, it, it would be about minimum a thousand views per dollar so if he got hundred thousand views he'd get a hundred dollars already he'd pay for the spinner already and uh the rest would be profit send thankful reaction please all right let's send thankful reaction i'm just gonna copy wait i can't copy paste from my broadcaster i can't copy paste from this oh no <laughs> Wow, 50 times cheaper than Xperia XZ that costs 37990 I'm actually going to attend the Xperia XZ Premium launch, uh, which is the 4K, 4K um, HDR whatever phone from Xperia next week. All right, so what are we talking about next? Uh, do you want to, The Google I.O. one is very... Uh, let's just finish up the Google I.O. one because that one is very boring. Um, where did I put that? There, here we go. There were some interesting things for developers, but very boring for a lot of consumers. And I know a lot of majority for viewers is our consumers. We used to have a lot of a lot more developers on on watching the show, but they started to fade off because we started, you know, they they're not a very vocal people, and they don't <laughs> they don't generally need a show to talk about some of their things. Anyway, uh, on Google I/O this week, uh, well, on 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 Google News this week, uh, Google I/O just happened, and it was kind of a boring thing for consumers. There was a lot of Google Home and Google Assistant stuff. Google Assistant is now available on iOS. Google Photos does more th stuff now. Re record. Uh, I, I don't. I didn't really pay attention because it was kind of boring. Uh, Koi and LG G6 meron ng HDR sa Netflix. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so uh, Netflix is now adding support for a lot of the HDR capable devices on their displays to play HDR content on, for example, LG G6 and Galaxy S8. And also, uh, when it launches, the XZ Premium will also support, uh, we also have Netflix HDR content playable. Uh, Icy Hot says, oh, Casey Neistat is doing good then. He always has more than a million views. Uh, it depends on how Casey does it because I haven't, I haven't really seen what Casey, I haven't, up okay, so around last year, uh, Casey, or yeah, around last year, yeah, so let's say it's been a year since Casey has started with daily blogging, daily vlogging. Um, last year, he said he's not monetizing his videos because uh, he uses copyrighted music, right? So if you use copyrighted music, the copyrighted music's owner gets uh, the, it, the gets the, the monetized uh, the, the earnings from that video, unless you disable monetization completely, which means nobody actually earns from that video. And from what I can tell, he said last year he wasn't monetizing any of his videos. Uh, which means, you know, he uses copyrighted content but doesn't monetize it or anything. And he said last year that, you know, Casey Neistat, uh, he said that he doesn't need the earnings from YouTube necessarily, but he wants the added exposure to his personality, to, person, to his person, because he, his main business is obviously making movies and making content like that and making ads and working for other people making sponsored by samsung and whatnot that was last year i don't know if he changed his position uh between last year and today because some people have told me he started monetizing uh in between last year and today right so if he started monetizing around you know let's say November last year, then he's still making a lot of money. I just don't know if he act. We I haven't confirmed if he actually monetizes his videos now, or not. But if you don't monetize your videos, you don't get any money. 
Um, but like I said, last year when he was, you know, like, a th I want to say four months into his vlogging, five months, he said he's not monetizing. He's just using it for publicity, for publicity to you know, make his name known out there. Make it, it, it's like a, it's like he's making audition tapes for the company so he's auditioning for. I don't know these days, but I he could be monetizing and sometimes he says stuff about monetization i he just doesn't say i haven't seen him necessarily clearly say he's monetizing his content now with you know uh licensed music or whatnot or or royalty free music <sighs> i should try the new google assistant they release on ios i haven't tried it yet yeah you should you should try it it's pretty useful um GN Parina says you well features at SC Premium is the 960 FPS slow mo video. Yeah, it, I do like slow mo video, and <laughs> I've used the slow mo video on my uh, BlackBerry Priv a lot recently to to determine certain things like like lag and ghosting on my monitors, which is really great because you know very helpful for that. Uh, CNN bought his company. Yeah, he CNN bought Beam, not you know, not necessarily his his production or anything, but Beam as he, it's it's not entirely all of his work. So he still works outside of CNN for all of his stuff, but the Beam project that he was working on that was bought by CNN. All right, so let's talk about uh, Android O or or Google I O. Uh, Android O was launched in beta form. Um, I believe they talked about uh, better garbage, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm a developer. I, know, I should know this, but I don't. Uh, garbage collection, garbage, whatever. And also better battery life, whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, but, but the beta is available now if you want the beta. Uh, there will be standalone Daydream VR headsets. Honestly, I don't think anybody cares about Daydream at this point. Unless you're a developer and a VR developer, somebody who's really crazy about VR. I think VR as a as a concept, as a gameplay, or, or as something that for the public is flawed right now. It's it. We already have the HTC Vive. We already have the Oculus Rift, right? And that is our VR platform for today. That's what we know and love and think as the proper VR platform. Daydream. And, and Google Cardboard became pff, absolute, forget it, because the content was so crappy anyway, so that nobody wanted to. Look at all the, all of the, the, the VR headsets for, for Android these days. They're like $2 now and Lazada. So nobody actually is interested. And I've not seen anybody who's be like, ah, oh, I really love this game on VR and whatnot. So I don't think, Back in 2015, back in 2016, we, it was such a huge thing because obviously it was the VR boom. But yes, VR is probably dead by now, especially on Android phones. But of course, Google still wants to push it. So there you go. There's some daydream VR headsets available, uh, going to be available. Google Assistant updated. Nobody really cares, I think. Google Assistant lands on iPhone. This is huge for iPhone users. Uh, Google Lens revealed this is the smart uh sort of context context aware camera that knows if it's what what kind of uh flower you're looking at can translate stuff this is very very good but i i don't know if it's necessarily a must-have but it's a very very good technology that most likely we'll see much more of in the future but not, maybe not right now google home in the philippines nobody really cares about this stuff but obviously in the united states it's a big new market the um the the Alexas of of the of Western world, um, I, the Echo, Amazon Echo, I think, or something. Uh, they're huge, huge things because they're basically like Google for your. They're basically like a search engine without needing a computer, and that's a major, huge, big deal. To, to have a search engine lying on your computer on your home, doing searches for you. And a lot of companies like Amazon's or Alexa or whatever, and then uh, uh, Echo Dot or something, whatever, they're competing against Google right now for this search engine for your home. 
And obviously, Google will not take that sitting down, so they're improving their Google Home. One thing I like with Google Home is that you can now ask it to call people, uh, which I like because I, I definitely am too lazy to stand up, go to my you know wire cordless phone and you know call Pete, call my Shakey's delivery, or my mother or whoever. And I would like to just be like on my computer sitting down, right, and be like, hey, uh, Google. Okay, Google, call Shakey's or Pizza Hut, <laughs> whatever. I like that because I never, never, I, I hate that I have to be sit, sitting on my computer like this, trying to do computer things while I'm talking to the... Uh, you tr I triggered your echo when I said, Alex, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's, that's pretty cool how, you know, effective that is. Anyway, Google Home is competing in the home uh automated search market which is nice i mean i do like the features but it's not not never i mean it's not going to be popular in the philippines for any time soon but i do see some importers sell the google home um and i'm kind of tempted to actually just see for myself what it is google photos getting smarter obviously every year google photos get smarter not really anything that was interesting android go is new very new Sadly, another way to fragment Android. <laughs> Android Go is the super low-end version of Android with not a lot of uh, other apps and uses a lot less uh, code base. It still runs all of your Android apps as well, but it's designed for uh, Androids with smaller memories like 1 gig of RAM or below. And that's decidedly what they're targeting, 1 gig RAM or below. And I, I, hope, I hope even in the Philippines you're not buying a phone with one gig RAM or below. But in the future, in the future, Google said that all Android devices with one gig RAM or below will be receiving a version of Android Go. So let's say, let's say with Android O and above, like Android Oreo, Android whatever, Cherry Mobile or whoever brand that is going to sell us some crappy low end phone uh, will be using Android Go for any low end devices. And basically, that's about it. That's that's like the. I mean, I, I I didn't know it would take this long to actually talk about this all of these topics because I seemingly elaborated quite a lot about these boring, boring, boring updates about Google I/O. But honestly, nothing. None of these will be affecting our day to day, except for maybe you know iOS users for uh, whatever. But you know, not. Not, especially not in the Philippines, especially not in the Philippines. But there you go. That's Google I.O. 2017. We can now move on to the uh, squeezy squeeze phone. That Google Go is perfect for my my Samsung J1 Mini. So let's talk about the... <laughs> this is... I think this is our last topic. Oh yeah, Converge. But I don't... Uh, this is minor topic. Converge... Uh, if we can go to converge converge is now offering some very high tier fiber plans and obviously this is not sponsored by converge um, because honestly the provider my provider is a different provider for fiber thank thankfully <laughs> i have fiber thank god come on get started dude all right so converge now has two more tiers of fiber internet which is not what the hell is up with this website though View available plans. They do have a... Uh, oh, they're not even here yet. The higher plans are... 300 Mbps for 4,500 pesos, which is $90. $90. And the... The 500 Mbps is 7,000 pesos or 14... No, yeah. $90 and $140 for the 500 Mbps per month. Or that's, yeah, 4,500 pesos or 7,000 pesos, respectively, which I have right here. You can read that small font that's right there. Um, Converge, I think, is a decent brand, a decent company that provides fiber internet. Uh, my loyalties would say you should check out PLDT Fiber, but of course, it, it only matters if you're, you know, uh, what is this? It only matters if you have both of these fiber services in your area it doesn't it, it, honestly nothing matters unless it actually is available in your area because god damn it 
it's so hard to get fiber in your in in area sometimes. Uh, wanna cry? Um, you guys want to talk about wanna cry? So, ah, man. wanna cry is a new, um, actually not that new, but here it is. Wanna cry ransomware attack. I just want to warn everybody just in case. This this I put this in our topics because I thought it was gonna. I thought WannaCry was going to be over by now, so I didn't put it in last week's topic list. However, WannaCry has gotten even bigger since last week, so I just decided to put it in our topic list because it's that important. Uh, WannaCry is a huge, huge problem now that needs to be uh, addressed immediately if you haven't yet. So if you're not familiar with WannaCry, it's a new Trojan horse, or uh, or uh, basically, it's a ransomware. Uh, but I'm trying to find a, a more not more easier to understand name. It's a it's malware that prevents you from using any of your files, and you need to pay them money so they can open your files for you. Um, basically, it's like it's like somebody going into your computer and then putting all your files in a RAR archive and then putting a password on that raw archive which means you can't open it unless you know the password and this is spreading worldwide right now worldwide very very scary and this is what it looks like when you when it happens to you it says oops your files have been encrypted um can i recover my files sure we guarantee that you can recover all your file safety easily but you have not so i know not so enough time that's not very good english so they accept payments via Bitcoin, and I don't remember how much the Bitcoin was gonna be. Like I think it's three hundred dollars of uh, of Bitcoin. Um, and th uh, thankfully, none of my computers have been infected so far, and I, I hope none of uh, your computers will get infected so far uh, e either. But just in case you're 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 using Windows, um, I think it only affects Windows so far. You gotta. You got to go to your, you know, all of your Windows updates. Make sure you install all of your Windows updates immediately. Immediately. Like right now. Even if you're watching the show right now, update and then watch watch, watch BTS while uh, on your phone. <laughs> you got to update right now before you get in infected by WannaCry. But thankfully, you know, crossing, crossing my fingers, knock on wood, I'm not infected. Hopefully no, none of you are infected. But this is just a... A blanket warning for everybody out there on the internet. WannaCry is huge. And it's not something you, you want to just... Uh, you know, you, I'm not going to get infected. I'm very safe and whatnot. Just do the diligence and then update your software. Update your... your uh, not really antivirus, but really just update your Windows uh, install. Because it, it's not a virus. It's uh, it, it goes through a backdoor... Which many suspect, and I think it actually is true because it, I think it's perf it's been proven that it's using an NSA backdoor on your system. NSA being the National Security of NSA, what is that? Of the United States, National Security Agency of the United States. Basically, the NSA added a backdoor to all, all of our systems. NSA added a backdoor to all of our systems, and somehow the guys from from WannaCry are uh, have gotten hold of this via a leak in their in in the information system, like basically EV leaks or what or, or something was something that leaked out there. And now WannaCry people have gotten a hold of this backdoor to your system, and they're using it to infect you with WannaCry. Um, but it has been. Thankfully, it has been patched, so immediately just patch. Just install all of the updates for your Windows PC. You'll be fine. That's all I have to say about that. Before we move on to our last topic, I didn't want to take that long. I actually didn't want to talk about it that much, but, you know, I guess it really needed to be said. Uh, let's see... What's up, David Chacha? Can you run WannaCry on your virtual PC? I don't know. I have. I don't really know a lot about it. Uh, thank God my PC didn't get infected. I think Walmart malware bytes blocked it. 
I only use like Windows Defender if you want to see here. I just use the Windows, uh, the sta standard Windows Defender stuff. I don't, I don't like all of the uh, antivirus software because they keep on nagging me. Uh, and then Win Windows Defender doesn't nag me. So, I'll, and and it, Windows Defender is what top 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 eight antivirus anyway. So I just use Windows Defender. Yes, they chose Bitcoin because it can't be traced. Some about Windows Mobile. No, forget your Windows Mobile. Nobody wants to make a virus for Windows Mobile. <laughs> you should be happy you're getting viruses if you're on Windows Mobile. Nobody cares about Windows Mobile anymore. <laughs> Alright, so let's see here. Okay, um, let's move on to HTC's new flagship phone, which is the squeezable, squeezy, squeeze of squeeze phone. Uh... Ben says one of their uh, the, one of the computers in their uh, place have gotten infected. The piso nets. What's up, Vilma? What do you mean? What do you mean clickbait? What got you clickbaited? It was a it was a picture of Google I/O, and then the girl was squeezing the phone. How is that clickbait? Uh, here's here's the here's the actual photo right there. See, all right, let's look for HTC. Anyways, are you excited for the new third-party VR headsets along with the new Hololens VR controllers? Nah, not really. Holo, uh, the Hololens ones would would be interesting. I'm more excited about the new Surface products, which will be announced next week. Let's see. Okay, which one is the the more designed to stand up? So let's watch one of some of these. I'll just remove the music. So HTC just launched the new HTC U11. It's not gonna come to the Philippines, so it's not really gonna be issue for a lot of us. But you know, it's it's a major product release, and you guys always want to talk about major product release and a lot of people still ask about this stuff even though they know that it's got coming to the Philippines so here we are talking about the HTC squeeze a squeeze it's a nice looking phone uh, they managed to get rid of the camera bump on the HTC U Ultra which honestly was very badly reviewed by a lot of people including Marcus Brown Lee and stuff like that um, I, I think there's not enough video here to actually show you a lot about these phones. It was basically a flagship phone with a gimmick. Uh, uh, this is the new M1, or the U. Um, they, re they renamed the M into U these days, if I'm not mistaken. Um, remember the CEO of YouTube on Google I.O.? The Super Chat demo was cringy. Yeah, but I like the Super Chat demo because it showed people how to donate money <laughs> on my Super Chat. Also, she was okay looking, so, which, which is better than the other people there. Not that I'm saying they're bad looking. I like the Jodie Foster lookalike, which I put on our, uh, on our thumbnail. She looks like Jodie Foster. So, HTC Squeeze. Or actually, this is not, it's not, the official name is HTC U11. Um, and the reason why I call it HTC Squeeze because its main claim to fame is this feature where you squeeze the sides of the phone um, and it does a certain action based on you know options on the software so your your squeeze button can trigger the camera trigger Google Assistant trigger voice activation or trigger a trigger several things but Generally, I want to say it's for a camera, it's for Google Assistant, and stuff like that. Super Chat is cool, especially the speaker. She's cool. Um, so, for example, here, here you're using a lot of squeeze examples. Honestly, there are, like, if you were a, kind of a mean guy, you could say squeezing is for sexual purposes as well but obviously they didn't they weren't trying to go there as you can see it's using a lot of you know you can use the shortcut for squeezing for a lot of things i don't think it's necessary so necessarily a a mind-blowing or 
uh, 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 what are they called? What would they? I don't think it's a very. Huh. Can't find the name, the word. I don't think it's a revolutionary feature. I don't think it's a revolution. Oh, this is not about the HTC Squeeze, is it? We're just talking about 20 years of their, uh, you know, phones. Anyway, all right, let's close that. So the HTC U11 is a phone that has squeezable sides. <laughs> what is this one? Is this the same as the YouTube one? Yeah, it's the same as the. And I don't think it's necessarily a re revolutionary feature, but I do have to admit that not needing to move your fingers to do an action is a very nice thing. Like, okay, I need to do something. Let's press this. Let's squeeze this thing without moving my fingers around to do this this thing that I want to do. <laughs> the the David Chacha says the U11 is a gimmick, not innovative. Yes, I understand. It it's definitely like a super duper like novelty feature that I don't think is that much of a of an enhancement in phone, right? The thing is, you know, it is an extra button. So it's like a convenience key like on a on a BlackBerry, they have a convenience key for launching certain products or, or applications and stuff like that. I, I just think it's just this convenience key and unfortunately they stake their claim on this thing or they 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 seem to think that this is so revolutionary that they they make this phone or or, or, or that is the main differentiator of this phone or they, they this is the main ad marketing push for this phone is that you can squeeze it nobody in their right minds would think that is a revolutionary feature they would think it's a nifty feature for launching apps just like any other convenience key and it's semi smart that you don't have to move your fingers to squeeze your phone but it's not a revolutionary feature anybody could have done this all a lot of bluetooth controllers bluetooth thingamajigs that the Bluetooth clickers could have done this. A lot of, you know, uh, headphone but This, by the way, this does not have a headphone jack. They've doubled down on no headphone jacks as well. But that's beside the point. The HTC U11 is kind of like the U Ultra with waterproofing and this little squeeze button. The question is for everybody here, and I think I know all of your answers. Is this enough to convince you that this is better than the S8? Or the G6, or or Xperia XZ Ultra, for that matter. This is not an HDR display. <clears throat> like they could have just positioned this as a top-level HTC phone, well-built, well-designed, great, uh, you know, speakers and whatnot, and also has the convenience key, the convenience squeeze thing. For fee as a feature and as an extra feature. However, okay, so one thing that HTC does have on their side is that they claim that the DxO gave them a very high rating, the highest rated camera on DxO Mark for smartphones, and it should be around here. Here, 90 points on DxO Mark. 90 points, and this is the highest rank phone on DxO Mark right now. Here's the, here's the list actually. See as you can see here. So, let's start with 85. The 85 we have the Huawei Mate 9 and the LG V20. That's the score the DxO Mark gave them. 86 is the iPhone 7, LG G5, Galaxy Note 5 and S6 Edge. 87 Huawei P10, Moto Z Force. Oh, wow. I didn't know the Moto Z Force got a good score. Xperia XZ, Xperia Z5 and the S6 Edge Plus. 88 points goes to HTC 10, which is very good. Samsung Galaxy S8, S7 Edge, and X, Sony Xperia X Performance. And then second to the best phone camera ever is the Google Pixel. And now the holder for DxO Mark top smartphone camera ever is the HTC U11 at 90 points. Let's actually read some of their comments here. <clears throat> uh, 
Dual Pixel PDAF and Large Hansel help set the U11 apart from other leading smartphones. Here's a comparison. You can actually see this. You can go to the website and actually see the differences here. It seems like the U11 does have a better photo in here. Uh, so video, the U11 has the highest overall video score we've ever measured on a mobile device. Excellent autofocus, rapid exposure adaptation, and effective stabilization contribute to easy creation of quality videos. There are some undesirable residual motion artifacts, but they are relatively minor. So it looks like exposure and contrast, we have 90 points. Flash is like 89. I can't see the texture is very high. Autofocus is very high. A little bit lower on the color, but all of them are over 80 points here. It's not a lot of comparison shots here anymore. Only the, the only comparison shots you can see is the one here on the front, on the top. But uh, I think, I guess it's very promising. Obviously, not a lot of people uh, always believe in these DxO Mark comparisons. And also, not a lot of people, you know, always buy the highest DxO Mark phone. A lot of people are buying the S8 still, not the HTC 10. A lot of people are buying the Huawei P10 and and not the Xperia XZ. And the Google Pixel is very respectable, but not a lot of people are buying that either. I don't know where the LG G6 is. It doesn't seem to be uh, reviewed. You know, you got to review the LG G6 eventually. But there you go. Very interesting. Uh camera performance from HTC U11. Now, my main concern here is if it's such a good camera, why did the presentation, the one, the 47 minute presentation that HTC had earlier this week, they didn't show any sample photos. They didn't show any sample video. They didn't even take a picture. Well, they did take a picture on stage, but didn't show it. Um... Uh, but yeah, look at this. They just showed the DxO Mark score, not any sample photo. I would have shown sample photos on this. You know, like I could have given them like a scrolling picture gallery that I can see all of the photos that were taken with the U11. But I digress. You know, HTC does H whatever HTC wants to do. Uh, a lot of features here that, you know, particularly says, okay, 3D, you know, 360 audio and whatnot. Uh, they didn't say it was HDR display, so that's a that's a fail. I wanted HDR display. It's using a Snapdragon 835. So let's look at the specs right now. Uh, all right, so Android 7.1 with HTC Sense, 12 megapixel main camera with 1.4 micron pixels, optical image stabilization with f1.7, pretty decent sensor here. Uh, let's see. Raw format support, HDR boost, panorama, slow motion video, 1080p, 120 FPS, pretty decent. 4K video, um, and that's about it. I don't know. They didn't say anything about the autofocus. It just says ultra speed. Um, from what I hear, it's a dual pixel face detection autofocus technology, just like the Samsung S8 or the Zenfone 3 Zoom. Uh, Usonic. All right, so this doesn't have a headphone jack. But they do include a nice headset uh, in the box with noise cancellation, uh, which is right this guy, this guy, yeah. So this is very nice. It's a USB Type-C powered noise cancellation headphones. This doesn't require batteries because it's powered by your phone, which is a nice feature that cannot be done with 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks. However, there's still a lot of uh, people that use 3.5 millimeter jacks. They're including the USB Type-C to 3.5 millimeter jack in the box. Uh, other than that, it's also water and dust resist at IP67. First HTC phone with water and dust resistance. Very nice. The front camera is 16 megapixel f2.0. F we have a 5.5 inch, pretty standard quad HD 2560 by 1440 pixel resolution. Gorilla Glass 5 in the back and Gorilla Glass 3 in the uh, uh, Gorilla Glass 5 in front. And then Grill Glass 3 in the back. Uh, pretty decent nano SIM, blah, blah, blah. 3000 mAh battery, fast charging. And it's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, and micro SD. Everything else is standard with NFC and USB Type 3.1, blah, 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 blah. So, like I said, there's. 
there's very little things that are remarkable about the phone. Um, first of all, thankfully it's now a, uh, waterproof and dustproof. Uh, it's very nice that the the DxOMAR gave it 90 points. Uh, it's very nice that it looks nice and it's built nice and has a powerful processor and whatnot. Uh, it doesn't innovate on certain things like, you know, it, we're not getting an HDR display, we're not getting dual lenses. Um, it's still, I think it's relatively bulky and whatnot, but I think it's, it's competitive in... 2017 at the very least but i don't think the squeeze functionality is such an important feature for them to be so concentrated on 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 marketing it with that i think it's a nice feature i don't think it's the number one feature of this phone it's a nice feature but i don't think it's the number one feature of the phone all right, let's read some comments before we end the show. It's 12.04. HTC U11. Uh, low clickbait. What, what clickbait are we talking about? The, uh, the J, David Chacha says, blame the marketers. They got their audience's reaction wrong. Farmer Sanchez, U, uh, U11's autofocus is insane for a smartphone. Uh, ben says, definitely no. Emilio says, haha, walang Oppo. I... I I think Oppo will not get in that list, but if I also think Oppo is not uh, a phone that is being tested by DxOMark. DxOMark is actually not easy to get into uh, to be tested. It actually is like a uh, a special agreement between DxOMark and your brand as well. So it's not easy to get into DxOMark even if you have a very good camera. Ano kaya trend ng 2017 dual lens cam, no headphone jack, or squeezable sides? Uh, I think none of the above. But dual lens is definitely the most popular right now. Uh, Brunswicker Brunswick, what's up? This is a, a tech show. We talk about gadgets. Norm says, Aga Koya, the early show. All right, so I think I think that about covers it for all of the th stuff that we want to talk about this this show and I, I do like that we are very relaxed today you want to read some of this uh, liquid surface is stunning unique design that reflects you our most advanced headset ever built for personal audio now including active noise cancellation uh, blah, 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 blah. You t uh, I think it's a nice phone and, and if it if it can be gotten at a decent price it it's reasonable, especially with the camera, uh, DxO Mark camera. But uh, with HTC's track record of overpricing their phones, being the U Ultra is like 750 US dollars, which is what 35,000 pesos or more. Yeah, 35,000 pesos or more. I have very low, little hopes that HTC will make the pricing competitive for this phone this year. But let, we we don't know that for sure. I just hope they do because they're up against some very tough competition. Uh, I mean, Huawei is, is, you know, very, very well, doing very well in, in, in all out of markets. The Huawei P10 is a very nice phone, even though I, I disagree with the pricing. The Galaxy S8 and the LG G6 are some of the top contenders and they have better displays. Uh, HDR, you know, you could argue that the camera on the U10 is better, but I don't think that's enough. So, I think that should do it for uh, our uh, big time show for today. It's been a nice two hour show, very relaxing and uh, very uh, feature filled, topic filled. I don't know. Let's let's just go with the thankful emoticon. Wait, let's, let's add this and bring bring this guy back bring it back there we go Emilio Aquino says tinalo niya yung G6 sa chipset lang yeah so the G6 has an older processor or basically the processor is same as the OnePlus 3T of Gadget Addict um, but I, I think the G6 is, is competitive it just needs to be you know slightly lower priced than the S8 because I wouldn't I wouldn't pay that much money for a older processor. I would I would rather I would pay the money for for a better processor. They should have had 
that better processor already. But I'm waiting for the XZ Premium because I am a 4K kind of guy. I love my 4K, so let's see what the XZ Premium can do. Um, Shield Stream. Yeah, I, I'm not necessarily big fan of uh, the the, sem the wider displays of the G6 and the, the S8 because obviously that introduces, you know, black bars when watching videos and playing games sometimes. I'm a fan of 4K and the uh, 4K and Sony is giving us 4K in smartphones again and I wish uh, I wish this time it succeeds because I love my 4K content. I like watching 4K content. I know it's not going to necessarily reflect on the phone because it's a small display but heck if I won't try, right? <laughs> 4K! Alright guys, that would be it for the show i want to thank you everybody for watching uh, and everybody who's visited also i see hot thank you again for the super chat we really do appreciate your uh super chats um you know thank you for dropping by gadget addict obviously for being a part of their guest for tonight and everybody who's watching uh obviously our our, our uh, regulars norms uh aaron Emilio, and uh, even some of our new viewers and also Bench and uh, who else is there? A lot of them. The JB Cha Cha. Uh, whoever else is in there. Oh, somebody was from Twitch that I wasn't able to reply to. That guy from Twitch. Thank you for watching. <laughs> okay, guys, that's it for the show. That's a bit for the big time show of uh, Ma Mimiamar March it May May 20, 2017. Next week is going to be an interesting week again. There's going to be some interesting launches. Uh, and stay tuned for that. I'm Alex from TechnoGlass.com. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Achievement unlocked. I didn't get triggered. <laughs> Bye-bye.